Okay, so in this video, we're going to look um, at some more alkyl reactions. The specific alkyl reaction I want to look at this time is called dehydration. Okay, dehydration. Okay, and we saw hydration was when we added and uh, water to an alkene and that produced an alcohol. Dehydration would be the opposite. That is if I have an alcohol alcohol that is broken up it's an elimination reaction broken up between um, an alkene into an alkene and water h2o okay now the reaction condition for these it, there are two types of reaction conditions in other words two ways in which you can perform it okay you can either perform it by heating heating your alcohol alcohol with an excess of concentrated concentrated strong acid okay strong acid such as um mixing your all alcohol with um, um, into a solution of a strong acid like h2so4 okay sulfuric acid and uh, and what would happen is that when you heat it the um, solution of concentrated of the concentrated strong acid has the hydronium ion in it and uh, the hydronium ion in the solution will attract the hydroxyl and uh, to, to produce water molecules and the water molecule um, and uh, that in turn again leaves the extra hydrogen and the um, valence electrons so we will have uh, for example like this Okay, actually this one here will have a lone pair of electron because the hydroxyl ion would be taken and so there will be um, a valence electron here that in this reaction again due to the intermediary process this hyd um, hydrogen will also be attracted uh, leaving another valence electron and since these two lone pairs can now um, uh, share in order to create a double bond that is where the alkene will create the hydronium will now have received both HO ions and H plus ions and that together with what we have here is H O H two O and these together will produce the water molecules. Okay, again these intermediate processes aren't important um, it's just to help you understand why we have the strong acid involved let's change some color okay why we have the strong acid involved and uh, that is for the intermediate process to speed this up that's the one way in which we can dehydrate alcohols the other way we can do is we can let hot let hot alcohol vapor okay well it doesn't have to be hot alcohol vapor alcohol vapor is hot so let's say let alcohol vapor pass over pass through a hot catalyst catalyst now that means if it's passing through um, a heated catalyst it can be something like um, aluminium oxide um, aluminium oxide, aluminium um, to oxide or pumice stones or this there's, there's a few pumice stone is a type of volcanic rock okay volcanic rock um, and uh, if you let the alcohol vapor pass through a hot catalyst uh, so one way in which this experiment may look is we will have 
we will heat heat our ethanol or our alcohol here it will pass through our catalyst there and on the other side we will catch the gas Ooh, that looks terrible into a test tube okay this test tube would first be filled with water okay this test tube would first be filled with water and uh, and as we release the bubbles let's make a different color so here we've got the alcohol vapor coming okay it's heated so um, um, and, and not boiling just heated passing through here the alcohol vapor okay there's an intermediate reaction happening here so up to this point we still have alcohol vapor when it passes through the catalyst there's an intermediate reaction and as it passes through here what um, the water vapor that is now um, passing through here is actually if there's any water vapor left the water vapor will um, the, um will also condense against the sides here but because of the heat okay it will just um become water vapor again but it would be separated from the alkene okay so the um the, there would be alkene and water vapor going in here but as soon as it um, gets in contact with the water we actually have the alkene just uh, passing through while the water vapor will end up for um, um, uh, combining with the rest of the water so anyway so as my gas is forming here it will push down more and more the water level in here until we have filled it up and then afterwards we will obviously cork it up make sure that we it's not escaping and then there's two ways in which we can test it one way is we can um, we can use a, a lighter because we know that our keens are flammable so we can um, produce a flame and then just test and another way is if we were to add bromine few drops of bromine bromine has got this uh, red brown color so if we add some bromine to this it would produce um, a halo it will be an alkene an alkene plus bromine will produce bromo a bromo alkene alkane sorry bromo alkane a halogen and uh, this bromo alkane is colorless and uh, because of that we can it's another test since it it is ethene or an at least an al um, alkene if it changes red brown bromine into a colorless uh, bromoalkane okay so that is the the dehydration of an alcohol so let me look at an example of that actually happening so we have our ethanol here's our ethanol Okay, and don't forget your H's, even if I do. Okay. That is pass passes through hot, you can write it here, hot aluminium oxide, and that produces an ethene. Sorry, not that one. And water. Okay, um, now how about what will happen if I have um, my hydrogen...
So now we might ask, well, this one was easy because um, we had um, our ethene and we had our um, hydroxyl ion on the end. So there was only one way in which we could create this double bond. What would happen if there were two ways? So for example, um, okay, again, if we only had three, okay, if I had my hydroxyl there, if I only had three, then again, whether I make the double bond on this side or if I make the double bond on that side, it would be exactly the same. So how about if I had four? Okay, what would happen in this case? Well, in this case, as we said with hydration, uh, when we added the hydrogen, the hydrogen would have tended towards the most hydrogens. In this case, it's the exact opposite, is the one um, that will lose a hydrogen is the one that already has the fewest hydrogens. Okay, so the hydrogen seems to want to stay together. So in this case, we want to know, is it this hydrogen here, this bond that would be broken, and then um, bond to this broken, um, well, this valence electron, lone pair of elect uh, valence electron, will it bond to that one? Um, or is it going to be this valence electron here that will bond? So either we can have a double bond here, or we can have a double bond there. Now in this case, okay, or um, as a general uh, rule, you can, um, the the carbon with the least hydrogens will lose more hy hydrogens. Those who have more have more. Those who have will get more. Those who have not will even lose the little they have. Okay, does that sound familiar? Okay, so here we go. We are going to produce an ethene, not an ethene, an alkene. Okay, and this one is the one that's going to lose it so that's where our double bond is going to go okay, so we're going to have carbon double bonded to carbon there we go plus h2o and in this case what did we have what did we started we started with butane to all and it produced you but to in but to in okay you can see very similar okay plus h2o water excellent that's as far as i'm going to go in this video um and what is important is that you know this last little bit that i explained and also the reaction conditions for this reaction i hope you learned something and i'll see you in the next video there are actually more alcohol reactions that we will look at see you there